crisis continues to get worse. Months after Vice President Kamala Harris's visit, and the Vice President released her root causes migration strategy today. It focuses on things like economic inequality, combating corruption, and promoting human rights. But critics point out it doesn't mention securing the border. Tucker Carlson joins us now. The latest episode of Tucker Carlson Originals is out today on Fox Nation. He goes to the epicenter of the border crisis where Americans say they are forced to arm themselves. Watch. Where's our federal government? Nobody's helping us out. People are afraid in their own homes right now. People are afraid in their own yards. And I never leave home without a pistol in my pocket and a dog on my side. None of our family feels safe leaving the house without a gun. This is America. We shouldn't have to live in fear in our own house. It's going to go to where people are going to start freaking dying. And it ain't going to be us in this town. Tucker, thanks for joining us today. We're going to all get a chance to ask you a little bit of a question. Uh, tell me about the overall approach that you took here to try to bring this story to everybody that can see it on Fox Nation. Well, I mean, the, the, the whole key to covering the news is to try and think clearly. And just because the other channels and, and the administration are telling you that, I don't know, COVID uh, is the biggest story at the moment doesn't mean that it is. And actually, there are a lot of crises unfolding around the country, and this is the greatest of all. Our southern border is open. We're going to get literally millions of foreign nationals into our country illegally this year, and the overwhelming majority will stay. And the New York Times today announced that they should all be allowed to vote and choose our next government, et cetera. So this is a, this is a massive transformation. You can be for it. I mean, some people are for it. Of course, that's why it's happening. Some people can be against it, but you should know what's happening. And the people who live you know, within 50 miles of the border have had their lives completely transformed and destroyed in a lot of cases because of it. There are victims of this. It's not a victimless crime at all and we felt duty bound to show what it looks like and you know what do they think of it like let's say you live in uvalde texas what is you know what is your life like can your kids go to school answer no because the border's open and for some reason no one is telling the story i must have seen 15 stories about people who didn't get the vaccine and they're sick and they deserve it i mean that's like the lead of every every website in the world right now okay but you know, maybe there are other people suffering and maybe we should tell their story. So we did. And that's what this is about. Katie, we'll take it around the table here. Hey, Tucker, uh, congrats on this new special. I think it's a really Thank important you. topic. Um, you know, from the the other part of this is the vice president who has been tasked and put out these talking points, which we've been seeing for 30 years on this issue. And yesterday, the State Department announced that they're actually cutting off ties to the attorney general's office in Guatemala because of a lack of cooperation on corruption issues. Um, so how do people fe there feel about the way that Washington is ignoring this issue and just putting out talking points? I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm a patriot. I'm as patriotic, I think, as anybody. It's, but it's not Guatemala's fault. It's not El Salvador's fault. It's not right. It's not Honduras's fault. And it's not even Mexico's fault. It's our fault. We do two things. One, we provide a massive incentive to people for people to come here by providing the most generous welfare benefits in the world to the people who come illegally. And two, by opening the borders and summoning them. So to whip around and blame climate change or the government of Honduras or corruption as if we can as if we can fix that. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine the hubris required to say, okay, all we need to do is change 300 years <laughs> of custom in a country whose language we don't speak and we'll have it fixed. I mean, like you truly are a moron if you say something like that. I mean, honestly, no, it's our fault. It's our welfare benefits and our open border. It's that simple. Geraldo. Hey, Tuck, uh, you know, it's a sub, uh, subject near and dear to my heart. Yes. Uh, I am glad that you didn't lead with uh, the migrants bringing COVID in, as, uh, as too many reports that I've seen in recent days do, uh, because those overblown health fears <laughs> are the, uh, the xenophobic reaction to immigrants since the You're Irish in the 19th man. century. You can get the Irish for not in the 19th century. In this country. Oh, the, oh, spare the, me. Uh, oh, spare the, me. the Chinese in the 1880s, the Italians so I just threw uh, in the turn of the century, yeah, okay. the Jews from Eastern Europe, yeah, right. fleeing oh, from the pogroms. Oh, they were all bringing smallpox. Yeah, yeah. They were right. all bringing uh, tuberculosis. You know, Geraldo, we live in a country where we are being forced to take a vaccine that some people, newsflash, don't want to take, that Americans can be arrested for not wearing a mask because COVID is so serious, but foreign nationals break our laws carrying COVID and somehow they're exempt from the requirements that we live under? That's not xenophobia. That's equal application of the law. And it's not happening now. And it's an appalling double standard that every American, including you, should be mad about. Well, I'm mad about exaggeration and <laughs> hype. 
If what? It's a policy. They are not forcing. Look, if you work in the federal government, you have to get the vaccine. But if you break our laws as an illegal alien, you don't. Why don't you explain why that's a good idea to me? Well, I, I don't think the segment's about me. I would be glad to, but it's I think I would rather now refer about it to Jesse uh, let, let uh, Jesse be the subject. Now. Okay. And, uh, and Greg's going to ask you about fish. Arola, this is what we've. Been <laughs> Tucker, this is what we've been dealing with all week with Geraldo. So I'm just my apologies on on the show. I love Geraldo. We, we love him too, but um, sometimes I, he needs a little tough love. <laughs> uh, I caught last night some of the clip that you promoted, and one of these homeowners, female, was packing heat, and she never did that before. It was the first yeah. time she had to do this because she said cartels were operating on our side of the border. And tell me what you thought about that comment. Mexico is one of the most dangerous countries in the world. True. You know, I, I grew up right near Mexico. I really like Mexico, and I like people who live in Mexico. Um, but there's a war going on in Mexico, which we never even acknowledge. People who live near it are very aware of it, but there's literally a war. I mean, not long ago, the Mexican military backed down in the face of the cartels because the cartels were better armed. So that's the context here. True. And we ignore that. It's not just, mm -hmm. you know, these are not people just searching for a better life. These are refugees from a war zone, and that has massive implications for us. As to the fact people down there are armed, yeah. And it really should make all of us wonder, why would the federal government try to be disarming us, which they are trying to do, at exactly the moment when they're increasing the threat to us, as they are also doing? Like, what is that? I, I'd love to know what that's about. Last question from Greg. Tucker, good to see you on The Five, even though you said you couldn't do my show, but that's okay. Because <laughs> I was doing this show, man. That's, the, that's not enough. I thought we were friends. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk about this. Some, some guy got in your face at some fishing store in Montana. Uh, fishing store. Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah we you call it a you, fly shop. Fly shop, thank you. <laughs> so the, so I'm, I, I was, like, I find it very <laughs> frustrating that adult men are now becoming, like, mean girls. Like, he could have come up to you and actually expressed himself, and, been, yeah. and you could have had a conversation, but he couldn't do that without somebody filming it. Because he knew that if he had that little someone to film it, that would impact your response. Which, as a wise yeah. person in the media, you know that. Now you just look and you just go, okay, see you later. I'm wondering what you would have done if the person wasn't filming it because you might have had a conversation. Hasley, me in front of one of my kids. I yeah. mean, I had some, you know, I had some dark thoughts, which I'm not going <laughs> to articulate here. Yeah. I will say that the bigger, I mean, leaving me totally out of it, yeah. the bigger problem is that the mountain states have been completely invaded by the people who destroyed California. And what's so interesting is they're the exact same people who lecture you day and night about diversity, and it's so important, and you're a racist, and et cetera, et cetera. And then they run to Montana <laughs> with the same attitude. They literally run from the hills away from diversity, mm -hmm. and the hills greatly suffer when they do that. Yeah. I'll leave it there. Why don't you whack them? <laughs> uh. <laughs> that, that's not Tucker style. All right. Tucker yeah, yeah. Carlson, thanks. Congrats on the special. We'll definitely take a look at it. We oh, appreciate thanks. it. Thanks so much for having me. Good to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.